Hello everybody, my name is Monica Porter and my topic for today was intrapartum stages of labor. So to start stages of labor, we wanna talk about the five P's of labor. There are five factors that affect the labor and delivery process. The first factor would be passenger, fetal and placenta. We want to know fetal presentation in the pelvic outlet and we wanna know fetal altitude. That way we can know where the fetus is in relation to the mother's pelvis and how far they are from being on their way out. The second P would be passageway, the birth canal. We want to ensure that the birth canal is correct size and shape to adequately, adequately allow the fetus to fit through. Third, we have powers, contractions. Contractions cause the thinning of the cervix and dilation of the cervix. The fourth P would be the position of the mother or woman. Frequently changing positions can help to promote comfort for the mother. And also we would like to choose a position in the second stage of labor and then that is determined by the mother. And this will be the position she is in for delivery of the baby. The fifth P is your psychological response. We want to assess the mother's stress, tension, and anxiety because this can impair the progress of labor. Okay, so labor happens in four stages. Stage one is the longest stage of all four. It lasts from the onset of regular contractions into the full dilation of cervix. Stage one happens in three phases. The latent phase starts at zero to three centimeters dilation. In this phase, contractions are irregular, mild, and to moderate intensity. They happen frequently around 50 to 30 minutes and they last from 30 to 45 seconds. In the second phase of stage one is our active phase. This is from four to seven centimeters dilation. Contractions are more regular, moderate to strong intensity, frequency from every three to five minutes, and they last 40 to 70 seconds. In the transition phase, it is eight to 10 centimeters dilation. In this phase, it is very strong contractions intensity. They're frequent from two to three minutes and they last 45 to 90 seconds. And then the end of this phase is complete with complete cervix dilation. In stage two, we have stage of expulsion, the voluntary pushing with the involuntary uterine contractions. This is where the mother gets the urge to push so in this stage, we have full dilation of the cervix at 10 centimeters, and then last until the delivery of the fetus. So this stage is the pushing stage. So for primogravative mothers, it's going to last from one to three hours. And for multigravative mothers, it's going to last from 20 minutes to one hour. Contractions in this phase can intensify to every one to two minutes. And then this phase ends with birth. Okay, in the third stage, the third stage begins with the birth of the baby and ends with the delivery of the placenta. This stage lasts five to 30 minutes. In this stage, the umbilical cord is cut and the uterus contracts back to the size of a grapefruit. During placental expulsion, it's normally gonna come out on the shiny side, which is salt side, or the Duncan side, which is the dull side. In stage four, the fourth stage is the delivery of the placenta and the first two hours immediately following birth. In this stage, we want to focus on stabilizing the mother and her vitals. We want to assess lochia and it should be scant to moderate rubra. Infant should be placed skin to skin. And every 15 minutes, the vital signs, the fundus, and the lochia should be checked. Okay. So the assessment of a mother in labor, we want to assess the client prior to admission to the birthing floor. So admission history, we want history and review of her premature care, prenatal care, and review of her birth plan. During this, we want to monitor fetal heart rate and then find a baseline and also a baseline of her uterine contractions patterns. Next, cervical dilation is the most important indicator of progress of labor. 
So we wanted to make sure we check it um, every now on and then to make sure that it is dilating. And then progressive labor is affected by the size of the fetal head, fetal presentation, fetal attitude, and fetal position. We want to assess the frequency, duration, and strength of uterine contractions. First stage, we want to assess or perform loophole maneuvers, perform a vaginal exam, and then we want to make sure we assess that the patient is in true labor. During the second stage, we want to assess for perineal lacerations, which can be from first to fourth degree. We want to check the fetal heart rate every 15 minutes immediately after birth. And then we want to check vital signs every 5 to 30 minutes. During the third stage of labor, we want to check blood pressure, pulse, and respirations every 25 minutes. We want to get an APGAR on our neonate one minute after birth and then five minutes after. And then that leaves us with our fourth stage. So during the fourth stage, we want to do maternal vital signs, fundal checks, lochia checks, and check urinary output. Okay, so nursing interventions. In stage one, we want to educate our patient on what to expect and relaxation methods. We want to encourage our patient to sit upright and change positions frequently. And then also we want to have fetal monitoring and making sure our patient is voiding every two hours, providing non-pharmacological comfort measures first. During stage two, we want to assist in positioning and effective pushing. And we also want to promote rest in between each contraction, provide labor feedback to the mother, and prepare and care for the neonate once they are born. For stage three, we want to check vitals every 15 minutes, assess for clinical findings of placenta separation, and we also want to do our APGAR scoring again on our newborn. So for stage four, we already said maternal vitals and fundus and lochia assessments every 15 minutes for the first hour immediately following birth, making sure the mother's not filling one pad every hour. We want to encourage voiding. And then if foggy, we want to massage the fundus. We want to allow our mothers to rest after a bonding period with the neonate because in this stage, they will be tired in stage four. So collaborations. Interprofessional collaboration among nurses, the obstetrical team, and midwives. In obstetrics, it is important to have multiple disciplinary teams to ensure patient safety. Midwives take care of most mothers who have low-risk pregnancies, and obstetricians take charge when complications arise during the pregnancy or during childbirth. The nursing team is to ensure safety, comfort, and then provide proper education to the mother. These teams all working together have a good collaboration and then these are what ensure a safe and stress-free delivery for the mom. Patient education. So preparing for birth and parenthood, we want to assess patient resources to prepare for the hospital stay for childbirth, recovery, and for caring for the newborn once they are sent home. We want to educate the parent on what to expect in each stage of labor. We want to make sure we educate them that their pain will intensify. We want to have, make sure the patient is educated on all medical and non-pharmacological pain relief methods and different positions to increase comfort. We want to educate them on the positives of having a support person during labor. And then if they do not have a support person, maybe a nurse could help or stand in and be that support person. We also want to give breastfeeding education. Along with breastfeeding education, we want to just and make sure the mother has a decision on whether or not she does want to breastfeed or not. And know she knows all the benefits of breastfeeding and risk of not breastfeeding and then other options available to her if she does not choose to breastfeed. We also wanna do how to care for your new baby education, education on SIDS, making sure they're sleeping on their back, etc. cetera. 
references. So for references, I used my Pearson textbook, my ATI textbook, the PowerPoints from lecture, and then a few websites that were government resources and were within the last five years. Thank you guys for listening today.